All right, we're to the second piece of the network traffic data model. Please refer down below if you didn't watch the first part. It's not absolutely essential. If you already have your data SIM compliant, this is just going to show you how to get your data into the actual data model. This is the easy step. Watch the previous video where you have to do aliasing and all this sort of, sort of stuff, matching up your fields to the uh, SIM data model. Let's go right into it. So if I come over here, I've now got all these fields and we now have them SIM compliant. All the SIM compliant fields are over here in my, I've done the work. In the video above, I turned five of them over. I've turned them all now SIM compliant and I'm ready to get them into the data model. So if I jump in enterprise security, now this works for non-enterprise security, but I just want to show, as a, out of the box, enterprise security comes with certain data models turned on. I wish they wouldn't do that, but you know what? They might have another reason for doing it. Um, you can go into the, uh, there are ways of actually turning that off, uh, but if you turn them off manually, they will, the minute exploit restarts, they'll turn themselves right back on. So you actually got to go to the config files and turn them off. Uh, I think they might have a GUI option now to turn them permanently off. I can't remember. But the point is, it, just pay attention to this little yellow check mark. Every one of these little yellows is all—it's accelerating the data, which could mean that your system is running and it's not doing. It's not a, that you don't have any data there, and so it's never—it's not really a great idea to have data models accelerating when there's no data for them, or you're not ready, or your system isn't ready for it, whatever. So we're going to turn it off. Not to mention for the network traffic, in order to make changes, if I go in here, it'll tell you, hey, you can't make changes to this until you have turned off the data model. So we're going to go here, edit, and I'm going to edit acceleration. I'm going to turn it off. Save, and now it's not yellow. All right, let's go into this network traffic data model. And I just click on it, and it's going to give me a few things here. The first thing is this SIM network traffic indexes. This is actually a completely valid query. So if I come in here and I erase this, this is a macro, and it's going to pull back all the indexes that are have been set to be searched, and then it's going to look for these tags. And if I do this over the last, I'm just going to go turn it to the last 15 minutes, I'm going to find there's nothing there. That's because there's no communicate tag or network traffic. So we need to get this stuff working. It won't, And so I'm not going to get any data coming back. So let's fix that. First thing we want to do is we want to get this network traffic. So where is that information held? If I duplicate this tab, if I come into enterprise security has its own little place where you can get to the GUI. I'm not going to take you that route because I want to make this. This will work for you in enterprise security or just normal Splunk. So just manage your apps. Just come to manage apps. And if you type in SIM and you have the common information model there, there's my common information model and I hit setup. Now just for those who want to see an enterprise security, I will go to enterprise security and do it apps, enterprise security, and it's under these configurations. Configure SIM setup. It's the exact same page. So I'm going to close that. I just go in, apps, manage, find, search for SIM setup. So we're going to come down to network traffic, and we're going to see what it's set up to do. It's actually right now restricted to run on Corelight. That's not the default. Let's go grab something like malware. Notice it's blank. That's the typical thing, no restriction. You definitely want to make sure you restrict it. Otherwise, Splunk is going to look across all of your data for data acceleration. So we're good with that. I want to use the Corelight. If I had uh, Palo Alto's, I'd point to them or whatever. I just keep adding my list. And I'm going to hit, I would hit save. In my case, I didn't do anything, so I'm going to hit cancel. Now, the other piece I need are these tags, network and communicate. The place where you get tags is if you come to settings, field types, not field types, event types. And we can come in here and we can make a new event type. We're going to go put it in the YouTube app. 
we're going to call it um, network traffic tags. And this will be source type equals. I don't need to put an index in there because it's already being called out by um, that macro. But I'm, I'm, this is just my hunch. I don't have any evidence to prove that. I think it's always better to call it your index unless it doesn't make sense to not do that. So I'm going to just do this. A lot of time you'll see them just do, they'll just go straight source type because of the macro that calls out the indexes. It probably doesn't make a difference, but it just makes me feel warm and fuzzy that I'm not leaving it uh, to chance. All right, what are my tags? My tags are network and communicate. So it says put in tags with a comma separated. Network, comma, communicate. Got that right? Network, communicate. Got it. And then I'm going to change my color to none and change this down to a low priority. There's, I'm not covering here, I have videos on event types. Don't, but you don't want a high priority because if, if every chance you do want to start color coding some of your alerts, yeah, having this up high will overwrite the ones you want to. So it's always nice. If you're not planning on color coding this particular event type, put a really, really low priority on there so that you can uh, at a later date easily uh, get your stuff color coded. So I'm going to hit save. Network traffic logs, I'm going to need to go look for that. And I'm going to need to make it provoke, I mean, uh, permissions, read, write. Now that I got network traffic done. Now if I come over and do this exact same query, I now have values coming back. Boom. All right. So if I come into edit network objects and I hit pivot, I do all traffic and we just look at the last 15 minutes. Last 15 minutes. I'll get. That's weird. Okay. Sort dust source dust IP. That'll work. Not sure why it chose not to give me that. Lights in. Um, I'm wondering if my network pivot's doing something weird. Okay. It should work, especially since I'm getting data back here. So we're going to go do a different way of validating this. And we're going to do a tstats command. I, wasn't, I was hoping not to have to do this, but tstats count from data model equals network traffic okay there's data and if I group by all traffic dot dest IP There's destination IPs. Do not understand why my pivot's not working. But the fact is, it's fitting into the data model. We're all good. No, no sweat. I will, um, so I'm going to go back, just viewing the data model. Actually, I'm going to go sim, settings, data models. And I'm going to rebuild my data model. The fact is, it's in there. It works. All I need to do was set the whitelist of the allow list and then give them a tag, and they work. And I could validate that using the tstats command. Now the data model network traffic has stuff in it. And if I come into my data models network traffic, I can then accelerate this if I want to. But sure, why not? Edit acceleration. I'm going to leave a really small acceleration. I only want one day worth of accelerated data. And I'm done. And that takes care of network traffic. Uh, we'll be doing another data model of my web traffic. I hope you watch that. I'm going to just keep giving examples so that hopefully this con these concepts stick, stick with you and make help you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And have a great night.